Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Mesh Seibel. I'm so excited to be here in Orlando, Florida at the annual meeting of the North American Menopause Society. We've got experts gathered here from all over the world to bring you the latest information on menopause. I'm so excited to share this information with you. Okay, first I'm going to ask you just to say your name and where you're from. Sure. My name is Jim Simon. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist and specialist in menopausal medicine and clinical professor at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. I want to interrupt to say he's the past president of the North American Menopause Society and one of the world's experts in menopause. So I'm very happy to be talking with you. Thank you. Now, uh, you've been involved in a study that has to do with hot flashes. And I wonder if you could just first tell us, what is this study? Sure. Well, many women, perhaps 80% of menopausal women, have hot flashes and night sweats following menopause. Mm -hmm. These are very disturbing, cause them to change clothes during their days or wake them up at night in a pool of sweat. And historically, the standard treatment was some form of estrogen therapy. But following some major studies showing that estrogen therapy may have risks that outweigh their benefits, there was an effort to develop non-hormonal treatments for hot flashes and night sweats. So this is a study of a non-estrogen to treat hot flashes that have traditionally been treated with estrogen therapy. Correct. And for all such studies seeking approval of the treatment by the FDA, the patients that are studied have extremely severe symptoms. Usually seven or eight hot flashes a day or more. So these are women that are really affected by their symptoms and so they'll be interested in trying a treatment and also they will be significantly benefited or not by the treatment because their symptoms are so severe. So we have some women who really had the bad hot flashes. They are not wanting to take estrogen and this study is going to offer them an alternative. Correct. So in this study, um, approximately 500 women were randomly assigned either to active treatment with a non-estrogen, a low dose of the historically used antidepressant, paroxetine, mm -hmm. or a matching placebo. And they were followed first for the assessment of efficacy for 12 weeks, which is a standard FDA prescribed length of treatment for efficacy, and then for a total of 24 weeks for questions of safety. So we got some women who are having bad hot flashes, they don't want to take estrogen, they're going to be given a placebo or this new medication which is a variant of an antidepressant but a very low dose at a much lower dose than they typically would use as an antidepressant correct the reason for choosing a very low dose is related to the fact that standard doses of this medication and other antidepressants have significant adverse effects on sexual function weight gain and a variety of other side effects that would all be considered adverse. And the goal was to find a low enough dose to avoid the side effects, yet a high enough dose to benefit for hot flashes. Mm -hmm. So you're searching for the exact right amount. Correct. And uh, what did you find? In this study, the fortuitous finding was that a dose of 7.5 milligrams of this low dose salt of the antidepressant paroxetine was capable of reducing hot flashes both in their frequency and their severity compared to a matching placebo. Now and is this salt, is it the same thing as the medication or is it a variation of the actual 
anti well, it's yes and no. It's there's not an easy answer to that. There are some mesylate salts of paroxetine that are used for depression, but most of the um, paroxetine is a different salt. So most of it is hydrochloride, not mesylate. But I think that that's a detail that goes beyond what's really important here. So they can't cut their one at home in, in half or in a quarter and get the same exact thing that we're talking about here? Well, they potentially could cut them in three quarters and take three quarters, but that has never been tested and I think probably shouldn't be done only because I don't know how much you're going to get if you're going to cut a little teeny pill in quarters and right. take three of them. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about your, your findings. There. Sure. So this low-dose uh, treatment was capable of reducing hot flashes, both in terms of frequency and severity. The effect began at a week and became statistically significant shortly thereafter remained statistically better than the placebo treatment at 4, 8, and 12 weeks. Those are the time points that the FDA uh, requires for efficacy. And there was a persistence of effect that lasted the entire duration of the study, 24 weeks. There was a very low frequency of side effects. Uh, those, the most common side effect was nausea, but it was experienced in about 4% of active treatment and a little over 1% of the placebo group. So in general, a low incidence of side effects and uh, was effective for the entire duration of the study, both on severity and frequency of hot flashes. So there we have it. We've got a new medication that is a derivative of an antidepressant that in low doses is able to lower hot flashes in frequency and in in the uh, duration and it's able to do that without worsening their sexual desire which sometimes happens with higher doses of antidepressants so sounds like something promising it's very promising but as yet this uh, medication is not FDA approved this uh, particular study was done as part of the FDA approval process and because the FDA has to review the information we want to make sure that everybody understands that this is under review but not currently available for sale. Great, so stay tuned for more information about this and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you at a later time. Thanks very much.